please welcome, like savages, Henry Stewart. Oh, yeah. It works, but too quickly. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Um, as uh, Michael very kindly introduced me, I, I run a company called Happy. And what we do is we help organizations create happy workplaces. Yeah? Hands up if you do the woo if you work for a happy workplace. Woo! Excellent. Okay. Um, so I'm going to just give you, uh, go through a few, three tips for creating. A happy workplace. Would you like that? Yeah? Okay. Let me give you a scenario. Let's say somebody comes to you and says, I love my job. I love the people I work with. I'm even happy with what I'm paid. But I can't stand my manager. Mm -hmm. Has anybody been in that situation? Yeah? What normally happens? They leave, yes? That's the normal outcome, the person, the, the person ends up leaving, whatever you do. A happy, we, have, we can solve it in a couple of minutes. We simply say, who would you like instead to be your manager? We have a, so tip number one is a very simple one. Let people choose their manager. Make sense? Okay, this is going to be an interactive session, so I now want you to talk to your neighbour for one minute on that topic. If you could choose... Who would you choose as your manager? One minute. <laughs> Hi, Stick. Okay. Quick show of hands. How many people chose their current manager? Excellent. Okay, some of you. How many people chose a different manager? And how many people didn't put their hands up? No? <laughs> okay. In the UK, they did a survey uh, and, and uh, found that 49% of the working population would take a pay cut to be able to have a different manager. That's how bad, well, that's how bad it is in the UK. Hopefully, in Denmark, everyone is happy. We hear, <laughs> we hear this in the survey. You're the happiest people. We like this. Now, so how does this work? If you've got a structure a bit like that, you might think, well, if you're here, you've got to have that person as your manager. And a key part of this is breaking that apart. So most managers deal with strategy and people, yeah? You have to make the decisions, and you also do the people management. Why do we make people do both? Are they the same skill? No? So, what you have to do is separate those. So, at Happy, we have a training manager, because we're a training business. Uh, there's 20 people in the training department. That training manager is responsible for strategy, but she has no line management connection to any of the people, because they've all chosen who they would like to be their manager. Make sense? Yeah? Let me get, and what, what most people are thinking at this point is, but what happens if you don't get chosen? What happens to those managers who don't get chosen? Poor managers. Nobody tends to think about the, how people suffer over managers that make their lives miserable, but they think a lot about the poor managers. The answer is, they get to do something else. Yeah? I'll give you an example. We, had, we worked with a company that had a marketing director that was brilliant. Brilliant at marketing, but no good at managing. She used to lose half her staff every year. 
Um, and the company came to us and said, you have to help us. We need her skills, but it's costing us a fortune. All this staff turnover. Yeah? So what do you think we did? What we, as a simple solution, which I'm sure most of you have thought of, we make sure she doesn't manage anybody, she spends her whole time marketing, and we find somebody who likes, who's good at managing people to manage the team. Guess who was happiest with that solution? She was. She was absolutely delighted. So that's your first tip is, actually, let me tell you another story on that. Do you know who those two people are? Yeah? Steve Jobs on the right, Steve Wozniak on the left. Because you'll all know that they set up Apple, but what you might not know is the story of when Steve Jobs went to Woz and said, come and join Apple, you will manage a huge team of people, you'll no longer be a lowly engineer, you can, you, you'll have such influence and power, and Woz thought about it and said, no, I don't want to do that, I'm going to stay at Hewlett Packard. And Steve Jobs tried this again and again, telling him more about how he'd managed this huge team. And then somebody came to Steve and said, look, actually, that isn't what was once. He wants to be a brilliant engineer. So Steve Jobs went instead to, to, to Woz and said, come and join me at Apple. We will give you huge resources. We'll give you the latest technology. And I promise you, you will never have to manage anybody. <laughs> and Woz says, said, I like the sound of that and that why he joined Apple, and the rest is history. So don't make everyone be a manager. And the simple way, let people choose the managers, and you quickly find out who's good at it. Yeah? OK. Let me ask you another question. I want you to cast your mind back over your working lives and think about a particular time when you're really proud of the results. Could be a project, could be an organization. Has everybody got a time in mind, a real time? In your working life, yeah? Nod if you have, yeah? OK, some questions. Hands up if it was a time when you were really well paid. <laughs> Come on, we know you're well paid in Denmark, no? Um, hands up if it was a time when communication from your manager was particularly good. OK, that's maybe 10%. Hands up if it was a time when you were challenged. Okay, and hands up if it was a time when you were trusted and given the freedom to do it your way. Okay. I've asked that question of thousands of people, and the answers are always very similar. It's at most one in ten when they're well paid. It's maybe one in three when communication is good. But what enables great work is being challenged and being trusted and given freedom. So, would you like a quick tip on one way to give people more freedom? Yeah? Okay. What often happens is somebody gets given a job, a problem to solve, or a task, and they have to go away and come up with something and bring it back for approval. Is that familiar? You do that over here too? OK. The idea is pre-approval. You miss out that last step. You approve the solution before they've thought of it. So this is our cafe in our old building at Happy. And we had a 19-year-old in her first job, and she wanted to, to do up the cafe. We didn't look like that at that point. So instead of getting her to come up with a plan and present it to us and us to approve it, we said we agreed the principles, that it would be colourful and, and, uh, and uh, welcoming. And the first time I saw it was when I walked in and saw it like that. Now imagine for a 19-year-old in her first job, the pride and motivation she got walking into that building every day thinking, I created this, I did it on my own. And that's what giving people pre-approval can create. So let me give you another example, our website. Our website is pretty important to us, I'm sure. Whose website's important to them? Yeah? I don't know about the rest of you, whether, what you do with your website. Um, uh, so I'd always been very involved in the website. So I'd always been very... added my advice and my help. You know, maybe we should have this or that or take that away or what's that doing there? You know, always adding helpful advice because I know a bit about websites. As a result, the person in charge of the website never felt completely in charge. So this time, we decided we would pre-approve the website. Um, that doesn't mean we said, do whatever you like. It's not about saying... You know, it's, it's about having guidelines which people can work within. So we did a branding exercise so the look and feel was clear. 
We agreed the metrics. It would be judged on how many people visited and how much income it generated. And we made sure Johnny, who was in charge, was talking to users. We didn't need to know what the user said, but he had to be having that conversation. And I saw that website for the first time the night before it launched. And I wasn't too sure when I saw it, because I thought, I wouldn't have done it like that, and why is that there? And because if you truly delegate, you do not get what you would have produced. You get what they produce. It was completely within the guidelines. So up it went. And when we got the stats, the number of visitors had trebled, and the income had doubled on that website, even without the benefit of my expertise. <laughs> or perhaps because of that, we had somebody who completely owned it and wasn't hampered by anything I was saying. So next one-minute discussion with your neighbour, what could you pre-approve that you're not pre-approving at the moment? One minute discussion. Or, what, or if you're not a manager, what could you be pre-approved for? Okay. Okay, quick hands up if you feel you could pre-approve more or ask for more pre-approval. Hands up. Okay, and with the, uh, once again, with the woo. With the woo. Yes, okay. So that's tip two. Pre-approve or get yourself pre-approved. Number three, um, Let's say it goes wrong. Let's say there's some terrible mistake. What do we do? Anybody? Well, I'll come to what we do in a moment. But I'm told in Denmark there are organisations that say they are zero mistake organisations. Is this true? No. Oh, it isn't true. Oh, OK. <laughs> Good. Because <laughs> I was going to say that was a bad idea. Do we want mistakes? Yeah. Why do we want mistakes? Absolutely. The best advice I was given when I set up as an entrepreneur was go make mistakes. Okay? And I made plenty. Yeah? So next quick discussion on this one, uh, with, again with your neighbour, um, is if you went away with that instruction, go make mistakes, what might you do differently? One minute with your neighbour. I'm on track. Yeah. I'll ask you, I'll ask you a couple of questions after oh. How could I not be with that big number? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay, the third tip is simple. It's celebrate mistakes. Okay, you've, uh, think about your workplace. How many of you celebrate mistakes? Hands up, with a woo. <laughs> How many would like to celebrate mistakes? Okay, I'll give you one example from one of our, our clients in, uh, in, in Britain. It's a, chemical company called Huntsman, 
And at Huntsman, they had a big red button on the wall. And if you press the red button, it discharged all the chemicals into the local river. That wasn't a good thing to happen, by the way. So one day, they had a scaffold, the scaffolder in. Yeah? And he was wandering around with his scaffold pole. You're probably guessing what happens. He nudged the red button. When his scaffolding company found out, he got fired. Yeah? But when Huntsman, when Huntsman found out, they said, no, I want you to, we want you to reinstate this man. We want you to send him back, for, to, send him back to work for us. And we, they held a little party to thank him and celebrate. Why did they do that? They did that. Crucially, he had, nobody's seen him press the red button. But he hadn't run away and you know, said, it's nothing to do with me. He'd gone in the control room and said, um, I've pressed this button, some light's flashing, I don't know what's going on. It meant they could solve it within 30 minutes instead of 24 hours. There was minimum environmental damage and no fine. Because the problem is very rarely the mistake. The problem is the cover-up of a mistake. Yeah? What you need is a no-blame culture where people feel free. Why do you think they held the party? They held the party because it spread the word like wildfire around the company that this is a no-blame culture. Yeah? And if you make a mistake and own up to it, all will be fine. So, those are my three key tips. Uh, I've got lots more. Oh, this is, um, this is a company in Britain. Uh, this is the Church of Fail. <laughs> Every month they get together, they've even got an altar. They get together and each of them stands up and, and says one great mistake they've made. Yeah? And it's never a problem if you've made a mistake. If you come to several of these and you've made no mistakes, ooh, that is, that could be a problem. Yeah? So, three ideas there. Choose your own manager. Who thinks they could do that? <laughs> Pre-approve. Who thinks they could do that? Woo! Celebrate mistakes. Who think they could do that? Okay, we'll have to work on the manager thing, won't we? Somehow. Okay. Um, one last thing. Uh, that's my book, The Happy Manifesto. I have five copies to give away to the best five responses I get on Twitter or to my email. If you tweet or email me with what you thought of these ideas, there'll be five free books to give away during the day. Thank you very much. I'm Henry. I'm happy. I hope you are too. All right, Henry, just a couple of questions. And uh, first of all, a remark. Um, go for that book. Uh, go, uh, send Henry a treat because it's a fantastic book. It, um, it covers what Henry told about and a lot more. It's well written and, above all, it's short. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah, Very you short. know your points, yes. which is uh, incredible. Um, uh, you told us about um, the church of failure, yes. about how important mistakes, uh, mistakes yeah. are. So, you have created happy. Yeah. You have turned uh, your company into a huge success, actually. And as you just told us, success is built on mistakes. Mm -hmm. So, tell us about uh, the major mistakes <laughs> you made on your way to creating a happy company. I think I've probably made a bigger mistake than anyone else here, actually. I, before setting up happy, I set up a newspaper. Yeah? A national newspaper in Britain. Um, we raised six and a half million pounds, that's 65 million kroner, yeah? That was 25 years ago. And we lost it all in six weeks. Six weeks. Because we created a truly awful place to work in, yeah? We recruited some great people and treated them really badly, yeah? And that, so that was probably my, that's, pro that's kind of quite a big mistake. Yeah. Because, yeah. But then, th then you became wiser. <laughs> I found it hard and, and to th celebrate it at the but time. But then, then you became wiser and created a new company. Yes. Which mistakes, major mistake, <laughs> have you made at Happy? Oh, right, now you've put me on the spot. There's too many to count. Um, uh, well, one, one mistake was uh, paying individual bonuses. Okay. Um, because if you pay individual bonuses, it sets people against each other. So there, there was a time about 10 years, about, well, no, about 15 years ago, we took a vote on individual bonuses. Because we 
we have democratic staff meetings. The vote was 11 to 1 to get rid of that. I was the one. <laughs> <laughs> but I was wrong, and I'm very glad to admit that. So that was, we, by changing that mistake, we created a team culture. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to, uh, to answer one question that might be very interesting for, uh, for the majority in the audience. Because the thing is that you have had an advantage. You created your own culture from the very start. Mm -hmm. Most of us work in um, organizations which uh, are built on traditions which are old. We didn't found them ourselves. So there's a DNA in that culture, which is not pre-approval, which is not choose your own leader. You have to reverse and redirect uh, everything in such a company. If you were in such a company, where would you start? Okay, if you're just a, an employee or if you're a low manager? Which, which you, one? You, you could uh, choose uh, the perspective as an employer, uh, no, uh, employee. Uh, as an employee, uh, employee, because most here are employees okay. or mid-range leaders. Okay. Well, wh where I'd start is by seeking things like pre-approval. You know, I have one colleague in a big 80,000-person company. He's a, uh, a new graduate, just started in the company. And he went to his boss and, and gave him what he called my happy plan, my plan to, create, to make my job happy. And his boss said to him, what? <laughs> Are you mad? I'm not interested in happiness. I'm interested in this, this, and this. So the guy said, okay. If I can deliver you this, this, and this, can I do it this way? And the boss said, yeah, well, yeah, that's what I want. I want this, this, and this. So, so he approved him to do it that way, and uh, the guy was able, using the, the rights he'd been given there, to get the kind of freedom and the happiness that he wanted. Mm -hmm. So you have to focus on what they want, but if you deliver what they want, then you'll often get flexibility to do it in a happier way. Mm -hmm. Create my happy plan. Create your happy plan, everybody, yes. Ladies okay. and gentlemen, Henry Stewart. Thank you. <laughs>